Any guys know what this is? Well, if you have a scout or a Cub Scout at home, this is what's called a whittling chip knife. Uh, if you know anything about Cub Scouts, when they reach the age of what they call the, or the rank of bear, they can apply or learn how to safely handle a pocket knife. And what this is, it's a training aid to help your scouts earn their whittling chip. Here it is. Here's a, what it is, it's a, a, a wooden knife made out of a paint stick. And it's, it's a good training aid to help your scouts learn how to safely handle a knife without cutting themselves. So uh, stick around and I'll show you how to make one. All right, what you're gonna need are at least two paint sticks. Now I've got the 12 inch paint sticks uh, from my local hardware store. And they usually give them to you free. If you tell them you're with Cub Scouts or something, they might donate them, uh, donate a whole, a whole bunch to you. Now you need at least two, or you need one and a half to make one knife. So if you have three sticks, you can make two knives. So first thing you need is a pattern. And what I did was through, through trial and error, uh, basically I, I looked at a regular knife. Let's see if I got my regular knife here. I got my handy dandy Swiss Army knife. And I looked at the way they're designed. And if you pull out the blade here, um, you can see there's a little locking, little locking tab there in the back. So I basically just modeled it after a pocket knife, any old pocket knife really well, will do. But So basically that, that spring tab is this piece here. And then of course your, your blade. And then you have the outer covers. What I did was I got the center point of the paint stick and I just marked the center point there. And I, I roughly, at first, I roughly just drew a uh, kind of a rounded, a rounded shape. You see that there. But after I, I made a few, I, I came up with just a, uh, a pattern, rounded shape. So uh, once you've made the first one, you can make a pattern. So just trace your pattern onto the paint stick. And then the knife blade part, what it is, it's, it's the other half. It's the other half of the paint stick. And what it is, it's just the, the knife blade. Let me show you how it's set up there. It's just the knife blade and the lock portion all together into one. So that's how that looks. And, and I'll trace it out to you for you, show you how it looks on the paint stick. What I do is I trace the lock back portion first. Now, I'm going to explain this to you uh, uh, and, and I'll, right now, but I'll explain a little bit later uh, the details into it. You're going to make the lock, lock back portion a little longer than it needs to be because you're going to have to uh, adjust it a little bit. And then put your blade on there and trace the blade portion. there. Alright, so here's what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it. Um, it's real important to note the blade end. See it's got the rounded top and it's got the little notch for the catch and this notch over here on the lock back is, is a little bit longer than the notch for the blade. So just be mindful of that because what's going to happen is if you make it uh, if you don't make it short and long enough uh, the blade is going to going to camp back a little bit further. It's going to kind of stick back this way. It's going to look kind of weird. It's not going to be uh, nice and straight. And what's going to happen is right now it's too long, so the blade's going to cant forward a little bit. And what you're going to do is you're going to trim that or, or file that down a little bit at a time to make sure that uh, until the blade is, is aligned with the rest of the knife there. All right, so now I've got my my pattern laid out and don't forget you need another stick cut out the other stick uh, with with the groove portion to make the other outside portion of the uh, of the knife so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over to the table saw now what you can do is you can use a coping saw if you have 
patients or if you don't have access to a, a bandsaw like I do and cut these out. But a uh, coping saw works very well. It just takes you a little bit longer. All right, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut this this part off first. That's the handle part or the outside cover part first. And then I'm going to trim around the edges and then I'm going to cut the blade off. Uh, I wanted to explain that first before I start the bandsaw because it is quite loud. Right, so there they are two uh, of the parts for the knife. Now you notice I didn't cut, you know, great straight along the lines there because I, I kind of know uh, where I needed to cut and, and I noticed that this spring back portion was a little thick so I decided to kind of freehand that uh, a little bit thinner but uh, it'll all work fine. You just have to experiment with what works for you. If you, if you feel more comfortable with it being a little thicker that's fine. Um, that's just the way I did it. One thing I did forget to mention is the finger groove for the other side. So what I did was I laid out another line. I don't know if you can see that there. For the other outside cover. I'm going to cut that off and then I'm going to line these two up. And just freehand a, a, a nice deep finger groove to, to grab the blade when the, when the knife is assembled. So here I go for that. Now that you got all your pieces put together, uh, it's time to put the holes in them. So what I do is I'll actually stack them up kind of inside out. So I'll stack the two outer pieces together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the hole for the non-moving side first. All right, so there. Now, what I'm using is a backing board. So when I drill, I don't blow out the bottom side, the bottom piece and and make the wood split. So here I go. There you go. See it makes a nice clean hole on the other side. It doesn't split the wood. Okay what I did was I put the screw in here to keep everything lined up but I didn't screw it all the way down. I just made it flush with the bottom so when I go to drill the hole for this side it won't move around too much and uh, I'm gonna put my knife on there there you go now it's time to dry fit everything so get your pieces lined up uh, you can knock off these burrs here with a large drill bit what I've got is a, I think this is like a half inch drill bit, but just just kind of spin them around the circles, the holes there, just clean them up a little bit. You don't have to go to town or anything because the screws will take care of most of the work, but get everything lined up, put your pieces together, and right at this point, I'm still not using the nuts yet. I'm just dry fitting these to make sure everything lines up and and to get the spacing, remember I told you about the, the lockback tang there, just to get that spaced correctly. Oh, I already saw what I, I already saw that I made a mistake, but that's all right. I'll, I'll take care of it. Uh, this finger groove actually should be uh, on this side, but uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll just leave that and I'll reverse it later on. But uh, that's one thing you want to kind of be mindful of too. You want the, the finger groove to be over on this side. So anyway, so you pull the blade out and and you see how the blade doesn't open all the way. It's catching on that on that catch there. So what I do is I'll just take and see how it swings down. What I'll do 
is I'll, I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and just rub this on a piece of sandpaper. Rub this on a piece of sandpaper like this. Make sure you hold it right at the very tip or else you're going to break this piece. So you want to go very carefully because it doesn't take much to go from not enough to too much. All right, there we go. Now that it's moved out all the parts, what you can do is you can either lay them on a piece of paper and then paint them, you know, whatever color. And then once they're dry on one side, you flip them over and you can paint the other side. But I don't have that kind of patience. So what I did was I just took some old wire and I strung them through so that way I can paint both sides at the same time and what I'm going to do is uh, here's the uh, here's the other parts these are the internal parts I'm going to paint these silver and then the external parts I'm going to paint them red and what I'm going to do is after I paint them I'm going to hang them on my fan in front of the fan to dry and I'll show you a picture of that I'm going to do the painting offline because I got to do it outside and then after the parts are painted we'll, I'll show you how to assemble the final product. Alright, now here's how you assemble it. Get your painted pieces together. You're going to need the two screws and two nuts. And by the way, the screws are 10 by 32 by half inch. That means that's the thread count and that's the the length of the screw uh, is a half inch. So what I do is I start with just one half on the unpainted side and I, you can um, where the finger groove is you want the blade to be on the side of the finger groove so you line up the holes there and then what I do actually is first I'll put a drop of super glue and on the blade lock portion and what that does it keeps it in place so if you don't super glue this in there this will just swing in and out so what I'll do is I'll put a, piece, a little bit of super glue on the bottom edge here. Now you don't want to glue all the way to the end because you want this to spring just a little bit. So I would just glue probably about three quarters of the way on the bottom here on both sides. And you know, maybe around the hole a little bit if you like. And I'm using particularly uh, Gorilla Glue, but you can use any kind of super glue. Uh, you can get the cheap stuff for uh, three four dollar or something like that. Uh, the Gorilla Glue is kind of nice because it's a little thick. Uh, you can also get the thick uh, gel type super glues too if you like. Uh, that works pretty well. And then I do that on both sides. And I'll put a little... Oh, gotta watch that little finger groove on the on the other side. That's just the way the paint stick is made. But just a little bit right there. And, and it doesn't matter that it's painted because this, this super glue will penetrate right through it. So now I'll line that up. Now I'll line my knife up, my blade up, and I just, yeah, you, I mean, yeah, that's fine. And I'll put the other piece on top, and then I'll just start to screw here. And there you have it. Got your knife. Oops, a little tight. That's why you don't want to wrench them down too much. Let me back it out a little bit. Until it gets worked in, it's going to be a little tight. Ugh. There we go. Yeah, you got to work it in a little bit. This is fresh paint, so uh, it's going to be a little sticky. But there you go. There's your knife. 
and see this lockback feature there? Uh, it keeps the knife from going too far, but it does, you, you notice it does spring a little bit. There you go. Hope you have fun. See you later.